All right. Well, again, Happy New Year. And uh, today, uh, uh, a couple of my colleagues and I would like to walk you through portions of the uh, ESSER data collection. So, uh, but before we get too far down the road, let me just uh, remind you the webinar is being recorded. Uh, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat, just like Della did a few moments ago. And uh, we will address them as we go. You're also welcome to uh, uh, unmute yourself and interject a question. Uh, if, if we're covering something that you have an immediate question on, just please uh, speak clearly so your colleagues can hear the question. Our purpose today uh, uh, is actually four parts. So one, we will provide an overview of the ESSER federal data collection. We'll uh, do a review of timelines for ongoing technical support, um, review expenditure reporting parameters, and then we'll walk you through the expenditure reporting pool or tool. <laughs> All right. So in just some session details, just so you know where we're drawing uh, some of our information from, uh, you can actually find the full data collection on the Federal Register. Um, and then um, uh, any questions that you might have around uh, allowable uses as we go through 20% um, uh, set aside, anything like that, we're pulling that information from the ESSER and GEAR FAQ. We also have, just a reminder on our website, we have several uh, ESSER guidance documents for each uh, ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and ESSER 3. So, so let's take just a minute and let me introduce you to the team who's been working on this, uh, this project. Um, first of all, I'm Jeff Kirksey. I am the ESSER program manager and uh, uh, have interacted with a number of you uh, over the last, oh, almost 10 months since I came here to OPI uh, and fielding lots of questions in the ESSER program. Uh, and I'll keep on journeying with you uh, <laughs> for, for a little while yet so we can get through this data collection. Um, uh, Chris and Sam, let me, um, uh, uh, let me turn it over to you and you can introduce yourselves. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Noel and I'm the Data Operations Manager. And um, I just scrolled through the list of attendees and it was great to see a lot of familiar names on there, even though I can't see your faces, people that I, worked with way back in the day when I was the science coordinator to people who have been 4-H leaders for my kids. And so it's so great to be working in this long, long collection of small towns that we call Montana. And I'm excited to be working with you today on how best to get this data back to the federal government so that we can continue to receive the wonderful recovery money that we're getting for our schools at this time. Thanks, Chris. I'm Samantha. I am fairly new to the OPI, but I'm a project manager, and this was kind of the first project that I worked on. Um, I helped build the surveys that you guys are going to be taking, so I should be able to help with some technical questions. All right, great. Thanks, ladies. And you'll be hearing from them uh, more as we go along today. Uh, but uh, let's start with just uh, kind of an overview. Uh, I'm sure you know this by heart now, um, but you'll remember that uh, the ESSER funds, ESSER stands for Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief. It came to us in three rounds of funding. ESSER 1, also known as the CARES Act, uh, came to Montana just over $41 million. Um, the ESSER 2 uh, allocation uh, came to us through the CARISA Act at just over $170 million. And ESSER III um, is uh, also known as ARPA, came through the American Rescue Plan Act, um, came to Montana at just over $382 million. And so, and I know that you all have been busy uh, budgeting and expending those funds. And uh, so this shouldn't be new for you, but always good to remember it comes in those three distinct pots. Um, all right. 
So uh, why a data collection? Um, and you may have looked at the tool and thought, why are we doing this? <laughs> and, uh, and it's okay to ask why. Um, and, uh, but uh, just, just a reminder to you that the three congressional acts that established the ESSER program, which I just uh, chatted about, just shared with you a moment ago about, they charged the US Department of uh, uh, education with the responsibility of monitoring funds to ensure appropriate use. And so, so a lot of what we're, we're doing through the data collection is kind of demonstrating how you're using funds and that those funds are used appropriately. The data also provides a tool for measuring funding effectiveness. So um, the federal government, uh, OPI, and probably you too want to know that your ESSER dollars are uh, making a difference and helping you achieve the goals um, that you have. And so that's another reason why we uh, 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 submit the data collection. And if you've forgotten, uh, you actually agreed that you would <laughs> that you would uh, participate in a data collection too in your e-grant assurances. Um, uh, one of the one of the items there is uh, in agreeing to take the funds that you agree to, uh, provide requested data. And so um, that is the why uh, for why we're doing a data collection. Um, so what type of information is being collected? There's actually six different categories of information being collected. Um, and we'll go over expenditure details today. Um, and then in our subsequent webinars, we will be um, uh, addressing uh, the other categories, such as safe, uh, safe school reopening and infrastructure info, the 20% set aside for lost instructional time details, hiring, retention, and uh, full-time equivalency data, home internet and technology information, and finally, equitable support for learning recovery and acceleration information. So. Uh, uh, a question uh, that I have gotten that some of you have started to go down this road uh, a little bit is what is the what time period does this data collection cover? So this is actually the second uh, federal data collection. It looks different um, from uh, from the first um, as. Um, as the as the federal government has had uh, more time to determine what data they want, um, they have supplied uh, a pretty robust data collection, and so this is actually the second, um, and uh, and this is covering the federal fiscal year uh, from October first, twenty twenty to September thirtieth, twenty twenty one. So we're working off the federal fiscal year. So. And then how should your data be broken down? Uh, your data should be reported by um, LEA. This means that systems that manage two or more districts must complete the data collection for each district. So if you, um, even though you may have done your, um, uh, your um, ARPESR plan uh, as a system that includes both your uh, um, elementary and high school district, you will need to report data specifically as it relates to your elementary district or your high school district. If you are in, in uh, if you are a K through 12 district, just one data collection uh, as you are one consolidated district. So, all right. And that also means that you should have received um, uh, two different logins uh, for uh, each of the districts um, you represent, or more. If you're a county superintendent, you may have more than two. So, <laughs> so, and we're here to help through all of that. So, so here's a few key dates uh, just to have on your radar. This is on our website as well as uh, sent this out in the um, last week's uh, ESSER bulletin. Um, and, uh, but uh, it seems like a lot of you got it. We have 101 here in the webinar today, which is wonderful. Um, so 
today, January 5th, is Working Webinar 1. And we are calling these Working Webinars because uh, we are going to do walkthroughs of the tools. And you are welcome uh, to uh, log into your own um, tool and work alongside uh, us. And so you're getting a good uh, orientation. Um, so. So we'll, we're doing the brief orientation now, and then we'll dive into expenditure details. So on January 12th, we'll have another webinar that is at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon, and that will and we'll cover equitable support and safe reopening. On January 19th, we'll be back to 10 o'clock in the morning, and um, and then that will will cover the 20% lost instructional time. Uh, home internet and technology services, hiring, retention, and FTE. So we'll cover all three of those sections in the January 19th uh, webinar. And then finally, on January 26th, we will uh, review um, uh, what we have uh, covered as well as uh, address any frequently asked questions that we'll be receiving uh, over uh, over the month of January. And then uh, the goal for uh, everyone is that um, by January 31st, you'll be able to uh, submit your data collection to OPI. And you can actually do that in parts. And so we'll talk about that uh, more as we go. So. Oh, yes. So uh, yes, it's one hour. And just so you know too, we are recording all of these webinars and we will be posting them uh, to our website as well. So, um, uh, so and thank you for wearing uh, two hats, Bridget. We appreciate the work that you do. <laughs> so, right. And I'm sure it's more than two. <laughs> so. All right, so. Uh, yeah. That's actually a great transition into talking about the tool, this idea that we have a lot of people doing this who wear multiple hats and we have districts that all approach this in very different ways. And so um, it's a perfect transition. All right, over to you. <laughs> um, Jeff, I'll just let you know when we're ready to move. The next Sounds next great. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've spent my career in a lot of different places in education. And when we were given the challenge of creating a data collection tool that was modeled after the enormous federal data collection notice that we were given, um, one of the very first things I did was to ask myself if I were in a school, if I were a superintendent or an AR right now and I had to do this, what would my approach be that would be most sane? Um, and most sustainable. And I realized that that was a very different approach for say um, our superintendents from Helena Public School District who are on the call today who have you know a double A to report on um, versus say, oh, I don't know, Canyon Creek School, which is not nearly as large. And that, that level of reporting, what you might need to be reporting, how much data there might be, what your process is, how many people you have involved, that would be different for all of the different types of schools in Montana. And so one of our primary goals was to build a tool that allowed for every school type to have a sustainable process. So as part of that, we built out this Google site um, where you have access to the tool itself to helpful links and then a link back to the OPI website. Um, we're gonna look at the helpful links page first. So the next slide, please. Um, on the helpful links page, we have an FAQ where as we get questions, we will add responses in. So Jeff talked a little bit already about one of our common questions, why do I have to report my LEs separately? Um, the answer to that question is that we have to report it separately to the federal government and we would prefer for you to decide which things were spent for your high school and which things were spent for your elementary instead of us trying to make that decision. Um, we did ask the federal government for permission to report at the system level and we did not, we were not granted that permission at this time. And so I want you to know that that FAQ section will be where we can share that type of information with you as we get, we get requests for changes. If we are or are not able to operationalize them, we'll be able to share that with you there. Um, there's a video overview. It's not great. It's just me, um, but that is there in case you need it. Um, and then there's links to the worksheets. And I know sometimes people find that the links got messed up. Um, you can continue to send those emails to us and we'll go in and fix them. I don't know why that keeps happening, but for some reason, um, some of our links aren't sticking very well. 
Um, and we also have the link there to the federal document. And we did actually receive another update yesterday on that document with a couple of language changes. We have updated our tools to match them, um, but you do have access. We will continue to provide that access to the federal document that we're working from. Next slide. Um, the other page I want to go over is the actual tool access page. You'll notice that there are six different tools. And Jeff talked a little bit about those six categories. We took the federal document, we sat down with, our, with it, and we asked ourselves the question, in a very large district, who has this information? And we tried to group the information into things where you could distribute these out. You could say to HR, we need help with this survey specifically. You could say to your curriculum director, we need help with this survey specifically. You can give to your clerk or your financial team that uh, survey. You're not working with one enormous survey. We've done our best to parcel it out so that you can distribute the work. Um, if we click on to the next page, um, you can see within each individual survey, we've provided you both a link to the survey and to the data preparation worksheet. Those worksheets are designed such that you could either save the file onto your computer and deliver it electronically to the person who might be pulling that data for you, or you could print it out and have them write the data down for you. If you're in, an, in a district where you're responsible for all of this, I'm thinking of you, Bridget, who wears two hats in this district already, um, you can then print a full set of worksheets and go through them on your own pace. There is that full set available on um, the, the links page. And so we've really, really tried as we designed the collection itself to make sure that we built in those scaffolds and supports that we knew we would have wanted if we were the ones doing the collection. If we click to the next page, we'll see an example of the data preparation worksheet. Um, you can see that this is something that you could, it's a Google doc, you could type directly into it. If you make your own copy, um, you will need to make your own copy or download a copy to type into it. But once you do that, you can type into this directly um, or you could print it. Now, if we go to the next slide, I'll show you how the survey itself compares. So this is one section of the expenditure survey. And you can see that operational continuity and other allowed uses. If somebody had provided that data for you in this table, you can see that the survey is an exact match. You would be literally at that point doing data entry. That is also intentional so that those of you who are very busy as superintendents of very large districts, that as ARs, you may not be able to data entry this all yourself. And so we have intentionally provided this in such a way where you could give somebody a completed worksheet and they could treat it as data entry at that point. Um, and so I just, I wanted to make sure we made really clear some of those scaffolds that we built into this before we get into an individual survey um, so that everybody is aware of what the tools are that we've made accessible to you. Next slide, please. And we'll turn it back to you for a minute, then we'll look at the expenditure survey in more detail. Yeah, so as we uh, think about uh, moving into the expenditure detail and capturing that data, there's just a couple things I want you to remember uh, out of the gate as you're going in. And remember again that you're reporting expenditure details um, uh, only incurred between October 1st, 2020 and September 30th, 2021. Um, and you will report expenditures for each ESSER 1, 2, and 3 separately. So uh, just as you saw in the last slide, you'll see there, uh, there's a bucket for each ESSER 1, 2, and 3. Um, and because uh, uh, we are in the reporting time, uh, and, and because we are in, sorry, <laughs> just looking at the chat, because we are in uh, just the second year of reporting and thinking about when many of you submitted your ESSER 2 and your ESSER 3 applications, you might not have lots of information to include um, in this around for the uh, October 1st, 2020 to September 30th, 2021. Um, and so, and some of you uh, might actually be leaving uh, your ESSER 3 column blank um, because you didn't expend from ESSER 3 uh, during that time period. So, so uh, that, uh, I just, just want to hit that out of the gate, um, just so you kind of transition into that mindset. Uh, I think a lot of times 
we're juggling um, uh, between different ESSER budgets uh, that we're spending on different projects, uh, but you'll really focus in on each uh, separate ESSER uh, fund uh, and you'll really narrow in on the last uh, federal fiscal year. Okay, Chris, back to you. Yeah. So one thing that I want to point out, especially for those of you that are smaller districts, when we talk about the ESSER funds, um, we have a state set aside, approximately 10%. Um, and then we have the district subgrants, which is approximately, well, it is 90%. That state set aside has some unique um, features within it. What's interesting about the way that the money was distributed for ESSER 1 is that if you as a district, if your base allocation was going to be under 10,000, we supplemented that so that you had enough money to spend. Um, that happened again with ESSER 2 and ESSER 3, but the, there was a change in how we understood the reporting between ESSER 1 and ESSER 2. And so those ESSER 1 funds have never been separated out in e-grants. What's interesting here and important for you to understand, those of you who received supplemental funding in ESSER 1 in order to get up to that $10,000 mark, you have been reporting those combined. We will need to report them separately to the federal government. Any money that came out of our state set aside is reported completely separate from the 90% base allocation. What that means for you is if this applies to you, we may need to ask you follow-up questions. This does not apply to all districts. But for those of you that it does apply to, just report the full 10,000 on this survey. What that will allow us to do is ask you follow-ups about which thing you want in which category if needed, instead of needing to send you a separate survey about that um, money completely. Okay, so we will continue to put that in writing for those of you that this applies to, but I do want to be very clear in this space that if you are a district that received supplemental funding on SR1, you should report the full amount on this survey because that will be easier for you in the long run. And that is one exception to what Jeff said. So if we can go to the next slide, we're going to walk through the expenditure survey a little bit. Um, we're not going to go through every individual question because that would not be productive. Um, but I did provide a tiny URL if you're not on the site to be able to click into the ESSER expenditures tool. Um, we don't need to click into it here. I have some screenshots, but I, if you wanted to type tinyurl.com and then ESSER expenditures, it should get you straight to that worksheet. Um, the sections in the expenditure survey, you have the submitter information, which is the same in all surveys. The federal government then is asking us to break your expenditures down into the categories listed. They're gonna ask you how much you spent separately on these types of activities. And so if we click onto the next screen, first we'll see the submitter information, which hopefully we don't have questions about. Um, I actually will say that the submitter email, the reason that we have that listed there, we, are already, we already have the AR email um, saved in our system. In the event that somebody other than the AR is submitting, we really want to make sure we can follow up with that individual if we have questions in addition to the AR. That is why that's there. If the AR submits, that does mean that you potentially receive two confirmation emails because there's one being sent to you as AR and one being sent to you as submitter. Um, again, that's one of those affordances we put in that kind of allows all district types to um, engage with this in a way that makes sense to them. For those of you that end up with two emails, I apologize for that inconvenience. Um, so if we go to the next page after the submitter information, this is the supporting health and physical safety. Now that the text is really, really small here, but you can see that they're going to ask you how much have you spent from ESSER 1, how much have you spent from ESSER 2, how much have you spent from ARP or ESSER 3. Um, they are then going to ask if any of this was towards the 20%. If you haven't spent your ESSER 3 funding yet, you don't have a 20% set aside to be reporting on there. So this is one of those places that Jeff was talking about, where depending on where you are in your spending, you may only have expenditures to report in the first column. You may not have even spent anything beyond S or one yet. In that case, you'll just put in zero because you don't have any money that you've spent. Somebody asked me why we're asking you to put in zero. We're asking you to put in zero because it's a confirmation that you did not spend that money. We're not left wondering if you missed that column or if you didn't fully complete the table, we know that it was zero. 
Uh, does anybody have any questions about the supporting physical health and safety portion? Okay, we can go to the next one then. We can always go back if you were typing and we just moved on too quickly. Uh, meeting students, academic, social, emotional, mental health and other needs. I think this one is my best example. Somebody asked me why we can't just use what you've already given to us in eGrants. Um, this is a really good example of why we can't do that. These categories were provided to us after we built the eGrants reporting system. If you look at these and you think about the types of categories you're using when you categorize your expenditures in eGrants, you'll notice these are far more specific categories. If we were to try to use your eGrants expenditure data, what we would be reporting to the federal government about how our funding was spent would not be accurate. Um, and because of that, we find ourselves in this position of needing to ask this information again. Um, and so we do, we apologize that, that this is the way that it works. However, um, as I mentioned earlier, we actually did just get final, final confirmation on these questions yesterday. Um, we had to release this survey before we even had a final version from them. Thankfully, there weren't major changes on that final version. Um, but to help everybody understand why in some cases we are having to recollect it is because of that federal government timeline and our assurance that we will report this data in order to continue receiving it. Um, so this is my best example of why we have to recollect. You can see there's a lot of questions there that go beyond what we have in grants. Um, any questions about this or about the part about recollecting the expenditures? Excellent, we can go to the next one. Um, operational continuity and other allowable allowed uses. This one is also relatively straightforward. It's similar to the others. It just is a separate set of categories that you might have been spending your money on. Um, again, we can come back to any questions. I think the next one is the one that we need to really talk for a minute about how to do it, um, especially for those that have a lot of unspent funding. So this is where you have, they're gonna ask you about your unspent funding. Now the original um, survey that we received, this is one of the places where we're very grateful that they heard our feedback. The original expenditure survey was actually much more complex and all states, including us, gave feedback that that was an unreasonable level of detail. And one of the, the kind of trade-offs that they did is they took out a, a big amount of detail, which we're grateful for, and in return, they put this in where they asked us to get some information about what you plan to do with what's left. So of all the money that you still have, what are you planning to do with it? And you're doing that at the percent level of the funds that are remaining. I intend to break it down in these ways. Um, and so that we think is a very positive thing that the government made that change for us so that you don't need to provide quite as much detail. Um, if anybody is struggling with how to think about this, this is something we have not been asking in the past. Um, that is something that we can provide you some, some guidance around how to think about what these percentages would look like. Um, however, hopefully it is um, something that fits in with how you've been thinking about your plans already. And I think we just have one last slide for those other other expenditures. Um, and so this is where, um, you know, they're acknowledging that things are complicated and they're asking you to let them know if there was additional stuff that you spent on that wasn't included above. Um, with these, if you have questions, you can reach out. I, I recommend that um, ESSER-OPI email address because it does then reach all of us mm -hmm. um, and you are most likely to get an answer more quickly. Um, but that is all of the sections of the expenditure um, report. That's all of the different questions that you'll be asked. It's just then a question of how do we massage the data that we have about our spending internally at our district to make it fit into these categories that they're asking about. And I think that might be my last slide. Yeah. I think it is. All right. All right. Well, uh, we covered a fair amount there. Um, are there any questions about anything that we have covered? I, I want to address a question that Rex asked in the chat. Um, and I just want to explain a little bit about why. Um, so we they're, the tools themselves are not linked on the OPI site. And the reason for that is that we really wanna encourage people to share 
the link into the Google site so you have access to the worksheets and the FAQs as well. And so what we're linking on the OPI site is to kind of go into that more comprehensive um, Google site that's holding the tools itself. Um, I also noticed that there's a question that asks, where's the tool for each district located? You actually use the generic tool. Once you submit the, the survey, you'll get an email back that gives you a link where you could edit your submission. At that point, that is a district specific link. But unlike the um, unlike what we just did where you revised your plans, everybody will start off with a blank survey this time. Yeah, and I'm, I'm typing it in the chat too. If you don't have your login information or the link, it was actually sent to your AR uh, on December 13th. Um, if you are not, if you do not have that, um, or you can't find it in your email inbox, please email us and let us know, and we will we will uh, go back in our sent items and send that to you. Uh, in some cases too, um, uh, you may have a new AR in your a, in your district, um, and it uh, wasn't updated in the OPI system. Um, we can talk you about talk you through how to update the OPI system, uh, um, and uh, and but you can also use the login information that was provided in that original email. So, and actually, I would love to comment a little. Those of you who um, struggled with logins on the update, I apologize. We found a glitch in the tool after we released that. Um, we have accounted for that glitch and we believe that that is not problematic anymore. You'll notice that the email address for each of your logins is different now. Um, and so if you have, let's say I'm Missoula County Public Schools, um, I'm going to have a Rob Watson at Missoula County Public Schools email that is unique to my high school. And I'm going to have one that's unique to my elementary. Those are of course, you'll notice not your actual email addresses, but that is the way that we've resolved the system to allow you to log in multiple times. I will say that the information that we capture when you log in is just um, a confirmation for us of which district it is. In the event that you accidentally logged in for the wrong district, that is okay as long as you had the correct information on that submitter page. The submitter page is the data that we use. Your login is just confirmation of the district. And so if we see that the same person logged in, for the same district twice, but submitted information for their district separately, we can manage that on the back end. Um, and so those of you who, um, who were impacted by that last time, hopefully you won't be impacted this time, but if you are, know that it's okay to just log in with the same information for your different districts. And if you didn't receive the email, they, they, they came from Jeffrey Kirksey, that email address. But if you didn't, you can just email that esser-opi at mt.gov and we can send it to you again. Yeah. Um, so yes, Lance, you will, the, the government requires that we submit the information back to them stating which things were spent at the LE level. That is what their requirement is for us. Um, we are happy to sit down and help you think about making that distinction if, if that would be helpful. Um, and I, will, I just want to reiterate, we did everything we could to get permission to submit the other way. And we just, they were not open to that idea. I just want to go back to um, uh, Shanna's question. Um, uh, for expenditures, are these liquidated or obligated? Uh, for example, complete but not yet paid. These are actual expenditures, so liquidated. Um, so uh, even though you may have obligated it, but not actually uh, 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 paid out the expense yet, um, that would be if that's a, uh, you would you'll likely include that in next year's report. Put these two answers into the chat, Jessica. So the related services, those are going to be dealt with separately. They were separate in eGrants. The problem is that those supplementals were combined in eGrants, since you guys don't actually even know the distinction between them. If you had re the related services funds, those you you are able to see that distinction, and that means that we're able to use what's in eGrants in positive ways. 
So you may still get some follow-up questions from us, but it's really just that supplemental funding that we were not given the information at the time we built e-grants for that first set of money. We did not know that the federal government would ask separately about that. Um, and then Carol, I believe it is flexible. And Jeff, you, you might have a different idea, but when, when they're asking for that future projection, those percentages, I believe that, that they're asking that question because they wanna report back to the legislature nationwide what that plan is. So they're just gonna aggregate that information to report it. It is not an obligation on our part that you would stick to that. You could always do a grant amendment. Um, and so this would be the same as that. If your plans change, you would let us know about that. Um, but in terms of the federal government, I think they just want a full aggregate amount to be able to tell the legislature about. Yeah, you're, that's right on, Chris. And I, I will just add there too, um, and that I, your uh, the budget that you submitted in e grants is actually uh, it is flexible up until the end of the obligation period for each grant and so like in ESSER three that's September thirtieth of twenty twenty four so um, so um, because you need to be able to make changes and adapt to needs that arise um, and so. So I think you, it isn't, it's an estimate. It's what you're planning to do uh, right now. Um, but for sure that can change and you'll probably update that in next year's report. <laughs> so. One other thing that I will share is that um, in the past, when we've been doing these collections, we've often had to wait until the end of a window to look at it um, and be able to follow up with people if you have questions. With this collection, we are actually able once a week to pull the data set out and follow up if we have questions. And so I, I do want to say that, you know, you should be getting messaging from us within a week of submitting your survey if there is a problem with it. Um, once all surveys are submitted, we will send you an email acknowledging that we have all of the data. Um, you've received that confirmation on each of the six along the way. Um, but I do want to confirm because some of you have reached out and asked with, on other things about when we look at things. And with this, because we will have a, a relatively short turnaround to process all of this data and return it to the federal government, and we will be pulling it once a week. Um, we will notify you if we have follow-up questions kind of within that one week to two week period. I did want to uh, give one, uh, one clarification and we'll probably have to give this clarification uh, every year as we go through this process. But uh, when you look at your ESSER three base funds, um, the federal government considers the full allocation uh, uh, for both your base funding and your 20% uh, set aside as your full base funding. We actually broke that out in eGrants for you so it was easier for you to keep track of and so that you knew uh, uh, what exactly that 20% amount was. Um, but um, uh, just when, when you're looking at the base amount, it actually includes both of those, um, both of those pots of funds. So. Any other questions? All right, I'm gonna just go to the next slide here. Feel free if you're typing to go ahead and keep typing. Um, but just wanted to remind you where uh, uh, all ESSER resources can be found. So if you go to the LPI website, um, right on the main page, there's a button that says find ESSER information that will take you to the ESSER site. Uh, you'll see a list of all of our upcoming webinars uh, and all the login information there. Um, you'll also see um, uh, various guidance documents that you can uh, that you can uh, draw from, draw from, um, and lots of lots of good resources. So, um, 
uh, always just want to uh, put that back on your radar. So. Okay, not seeing any more questions. Colleagues, anything else that we should add before we conclude today? I just wanna add my appreciation for the work that um, our districts are doing to help students at this time with, as a parent with school-aged children. I really appreciate all that my school district is doing to um, make sure that my kids are learning and, and have a safe learning environment. And I just, I, I appreciate the work that leaders will do over the next few weeks to submit the data that will allow us to keep receiving this funding to keep providing benefit to students. And so just really appreciate those of you on this call. I know, I know from working with leaders for a lot of years now that this is a big ask and this is not an easy time. And um, and we really, really appreciate the commitment that you have to students. Um, the survey is done. Um, those surveys are all on that Google site. And um, Jeff, maybe in your update this week, we can just resend that site to people because even if they don't have their email address, if they know their login, they can get there just from the site. Yep. Um, and all of the worksheets are there. All of the links to the surveys are there. And again, I just will reiterate, the reason that we've done that is that if you are distributing this out to people in your district, they have access to all of the information when you provide them the link to that website. Yes, happy to send that out in the uh, in in the website. And if uh, and if you uh, are not the AR for the authorized representative for your institution, uh, your AR does have that information uh, uh, unless we don't have their updated contact information. So, uh, but if you're needing any of that specific login information, you can email uh, me directly or you can uh, email, uh, I'll go back up and whoop, there it is. Or you can uh, email esser-opi at mt.gov. And uh, any, of, any of the three of us then can respond. <laughs> so. Okay, and we will do this again next week and cover some uh, uh, some more areas. Uh, just want to echo what Chris said. Really appreciate the work that you're doing. We know this is a heavy lift and we're here to lift right alongside you. Um, and uh, we have tried to break it up so that it is um, a little more manageable versus sitting down and seeing it all at once. Try to break it up into six parts. So, all right. Okay, well with that, I will stop recording and uh, hope you all have a great week and we'll see you uh, next, uh, next Wednesday at 1 p.m. All right, thanks.